every society, there is a contract, whether it's explicit or not, between the people, the governed, and those who govern. And the, the social contract is that you would, the citizens will pay taxes, the citizens will obey certain laws, and then the government will provide certain benefits for them. And it is in this space that nonprofits and charities, you know, because most governments are incapable of providing everything that people need. So we have mm -hmm. private schools or schools that are run by charities. We have hospitals that are run by charities. They're providing social services that ultimately should be provided by the government or the private sector. But in instances where people are really poor, then it makes sense for them to be able to do it. And the argument that I made and the one you refer referenced is that in the long run, when these services are provided and branded, as these are, we're doing this for you, not your government doing this for you. In the long run, it undermines the social contract between the government and the people because the, the government is seen as not holding up its end of the bargain, that the basic social services and public goods that should have been provided by the government as a part of their portion of the social contract is now being taken over by someone else. And the suggestion I made was that for crisis, tsunami, Ebola outbreak, um, um, where there's humanitarian response. It makes sense mm -hmm. for the, the, um, the bag of maize or corn to say from the American people. I, I, think, I think it makes sense because for, for a number of reasons. One, when, when a big uh, crisis like that happens, you would have, there would be American citizens sitting at home who are watching television mm -hmm. and they want to do something but most times in a big situation like that sending twenty dollars right. directly it, it becomes hard you want to be able to aggregate it so sometimes they will tell people hey donate to this charity if you want to help don't because the, the capacity in the country that's affected is already stretched thin mm -hmm. and you don't want them responding to individuals so if they see their country see USAID trucks with signs to say USAID, they, they get the feeling like, oh, we're, we're actually doing something. It's my tax dollars at work and stuff like that. So I think in those instances, definitely. But when the humanitarian crisis ends, when the humanitarian response ends mm -hmm. and it becomes development, uh, my argument is that we should target systemic impact. And the systemic impact is your development should contribute to the strengthening of the bond between the state and people so that when you withdraw, the relationship between the state and its people is strong and is able to be sustained in the long run.